up here with Constance. We're waiting for Julie to get here and we are just walking in for day two of HOA. Oh, I thought that was Julie for a second. Oh, <laughs> she had the blonde hair. Um, so yeah, we're just walking in and uh, we're gonna have a good fun day hanging out and doing all the fun things. So I figured I'd go ahead and start the video in a very unusual way. So we'll see you later. You have to start with the end in view. And your vision, your fantasy, the castle you build in your dreams is is what defines what you think is possible. And most of us, including me, are stymied by our fears. And especially when you embark in new and new ground, like many of us are here, they're especially acute because we fear what we don't know. And th that's natural. So what I want to do is is articulate seven that I that I hear all the time and talk about solutions. So here's the first one. The first fear is the fear of knowledge. How do I do this? What do I do first? Where do I start? Anybody asking those kind of questions? They're all over the place, right? How do, what's, what's my strategy? I want you to tell your, pull your, pull your diaper up and look in your eyes deeply and say, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing poorly first. We don't walk well first. We don't talk well first. We don't poop well. Well, I guess we poop well. We just don't know where to put it. We don't do anything well first, right? And so, so I give you license to do it poorly first. That's how you develop mastery over time. Mastery comes when you've repeated enough times to see it in every conceivable permutation. The earlier you start, the earlier you'll have your 10 years and 10,000 hours. What's the worst case scenario? Well, you go back to work for a while. We got our one year nest egg, and what we found was that that thing just, boy, it just, it just miraculously dribbled and dribbled and dribbled, because guess what? Instead of putting gas in the car once a week, we put gas in the car once a month. I was there for every calf that was born. Cow has a problem, I can help deliver the calf instead of having coming home from, the, from work and having a dead calf and maybe a dead cow. I was there when the green beans needed to be weeded. A lot of things on the homestead and the farm, they're timely, aren't they? And, and, and if I, oh, I can't get it to this Saturday, I gotta wait till next Saturday. Well, now the beans are, you know, the beans are, where are the beans? You know, the beans are covered up with pig weed and, and lamb's quarters. And he's a funny chicken, you know, and so, uh, we got chickens and then we, we went cows and once we had cows and then we had babies. I recently just, uh, we had one cow coming out backwards and I never felt more like a farmer than when I ripped that, ripped that baby out, saved his life, no big deal. Move over to a salad and I got this in the bag. We got alpacas, which are generally worthless, but we have them. We have five alpacas. We got four horses and uh, two dogs and a barn cat. We are we are farming. We have 27 raised beds and we're counting. The only thing we lack is actually successful crops in them. <laughs> because though we are a we are technically homesteaders, we kind of suck at growing stuff. So <laughs> guys, we're on a journey. We're on a journey where we're learning and growing and that's not why we're so amped to be here with you guys. How many of you are on a journey? You know, I just wanted to see what hands stayed down. You, I saw you, you're arrogant. And over here, arrogant. Why don't you just go? Why don't you just get out? You're way ahead of us all, we get it. No, I'm thrilled to be able to be here because we're learning from the greats. To defend an area, unless you first realize how an enemy might attack. Now, the reason why I can talk to you about this is this, though America has not in recent memory had to retreat in like our early frontiersman days, we have our homestead we have to protect from Indians or, you know, French militias coming through. We didn't have to, you know, frontier kind of living. That's not happening anymore. However, uh, this is not so theoretical for me as it might be for you. As a member of uh, Second Range Battalion, uh, Special Operations Community, I would do overseas deployments to Afghanistan and Iraq where we literally we would seize palaces or compounds. We would take that ground and then we would make it defensible and we would try to keep any of these bad players, Taliban or Al-Qaeda, from killing us. 
What is the big difference? It's homestead protection, right? We just didn't have crops inside. How do you take ground and how do you keep it when everyone else wants to kill you there? Uh, raid, a traditional raid, if somebody, if somebody wanted to take your stuff, this may be how they do it. One, a just traditional military-ish raid. Remember, bad guys hunt in packs. That's what they do, particularly if they were teaming together to take resources uh, from a place. So understand bad guys are not like you. They don't think like you. They do hunt in packs. This is a frontal attack. And once you're kind of attacking on one front, a flanking element will come in from the side or rear to steamroll over. And so to understand this is uh, one way bad guys may take your stuff. It's just a traditional raid. It would occur to uh, bad players. Another thing is to use speed and violence. Imagine you're at your homestead. Uh, you're wanting to protect your resources. You've got some security in place. I had read an article about high fructose corn syrup. And that was kind of like my introduction to cream. <laughs> that was kind of how I got here, I guess. Um, so basically, it's basically like you're just going to be eating high fructose corn syrup. And it's really good for your body. And your body doesn't know what to do with it and all these things. And so I was like, that's it. We're done eating high fructose corn syrup. I went home. Well, I think I probably was at home. <coughs> home body. But I went to the pantry. I took all the high fructose corn syrup out of our house, threw it in the trash bag, and we were done. And you're like, we are never eating it ever again. I want to say 2003-ish. And, um, and so that was kind of like our introduction <coughs> to questioning what was in our food and saying, like, what are we eating and why are we eating it and all these things. And, and then that, that's led us to now where you know, we come here to this event and I bring all my own food and I bring my own cookware and I bring my own water and so it does lead you down a crazy path, but it's it's one that I, I feel like I have to do, you know, to, to keep myself, my health at a certain level with what I've been diagnosed with. And so that's just something, you know, to give you a little background with me. But um, so concerns and food, there's so much. So I just decided to focus on a few because we could be here all day just for that. But GMOs, obviously, we don't want to be putting genetically modified ingredients into our body. But why? Why do you, you know, why do you think that we would want to do that? If it's going to kill a bug, what do you think it's going to do to our microbiome? Just like, he w you know, we were trying to figure out, well, he was trying to figure out what's going to make me feel my best because he felt, like, terrible. And um, he was just like, I'm going to sit in the sun every day. You know, is this is this okay? Like, is that sunscreen on? You know, like, what are what what are what are people saying about this? So I started researching it, and I was like, wow, man, I need to get this on myself. <laughs> so I started laying out with them, and so um, I've been we've been doing the sun, and I've actually been able to keep my vitamin D levels up with just sun exposure and cod liver oil and even oil. Um, those have been my two things that I've been able to keep my vitamin D levels, and Justin's been able to keep his vitamin D levels up with it as well. But then, like, COVID happened, and I started seeing, like, health research, like, you need to be weightlifting. You need to be building muscle mass. Building muscle mass will help you stay healthy. And I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Maybe we should start doing this. And so then Justin's like, I'm going to start weightlifting. And I was like, okay, well, I'll do it with you. So we have a trainer, and we have to keep him because... Y'all, I'll be honest, we will not do it if he does not come. If Jacob does not show up at 11.15 on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Rebecca and Justin will not work out. <laughs> I'm not kidding, because he's like trying to, he's like, he's like, oh, you guys, I'll just teach you all the, I'll teach you all the moves, and then you guys can just do it on your own. I'm like, <laughs> you have no idea, you have no idea. He is like literally our professional accountability partner. Yeah, I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I will not lie. I hate working out with all of my being, but... The research that I have read, um, you will, like, literally, it will help you live longer. Like, shockingly, like, lifting weight will make you live longer. It's not, not it's like, it's like the number one predictor of, like, long dead weight. Is that not crazy? Like, I, when he told me that, I was like, really? Like, are you sure? Like, are you serious? Because I don't want to do this anymore. Yes. I got to leave you raring. Are you guys raring to go? After this, you're getting energized and ready to do this. Good. Hopefully, we're going to help you do that a little bit more. We're going to talk about turning off the news and building a homestead. 2005, we said we were going to get rid of our TV. And now, that was before it was cool to get rid of your TV. That was before all the streaming platforms and 
and all this. And I heard, we heard an old couple say once, well, we don't watch TV, we just listen to the radio. Well, that was us. But then the radio got kind of boring. But we, we literally did get rid of our TV, and now what do you do in the evening? Because we grew up, you just watched uh, Friends and then Seinfeld and whatever. You, that, that was your evening. And, but we got rid of our TV, because we figured it was mostly junk anyway. So we got rid of, what are we gonna do? And for a while we were bored and it was hard, and before long, we started writing, we started reading, we started volunteering at the youth group. And we said, how did we ever have time to watch TV? Now, raise your hand if you actually like eating kale. Oh boy. <laughs> this might not work. We got a lot of kale fans. She's raising her hand all shy. Don't grow stuff because it's the cool thing to do. Uh, people are talking about cool Robbie. That's weird. Uh, uh, Eggplant was the cool thing. It's purple, it's different, we're like, we're gonna grow eggplant. And the bugs came and we didn't care. Have all the eggplant you want, because we didn't really like it. Okay? You don't want a can? Don't can. Oh, but I better not go that. Oh, boy. No. We haven't canned. We have, it's been 15 years. We haven't canned. Oh, fact checker. She canned. Okay, I think she's been canned the last couple of years. But that's the thing. You get in this, you think you've got to do everything. Well, what I'm, the point is, instead of, uh, I say don't grow something because it's cool, grow stuff you like. If you're a meat and potatoes person, grow meat and potatoes, that's fine. Okay, I've seen these, these, you know, kale got a real good traction there for a while, and I saw these t-shirts and stuff. Kale, yeah. Have you seen those? Have you seen those? And, and, and I challenged them at the last Ohio event to make me a little something. Oh, boy. I thought it was right under here. No, that was good. Can I rip it back up? That's my button. I was hoping it was going to be a little more quick. Now it's all awkward. I thought it was right under my sweater. Hey, wait for it. There we go. Wait for it. Wait for it. Everybody say it. Hell no. Now. They also made a, a Kelly Yeah t-shirt, so go make, go make your vote at that t-shirt tent, wherever it is. I don't know if he's produced them yet, but. I'm actually back home and I'm out doing some deliveries and I figured what better time to end this than now because I didn't do it earlier. So basically what happened was is that after the actual conference, we went out for a quick dinner with, um, you see Becky from Acre Homestead and her mom, and then Julie from Rowan Co Farms and her husband. And then after that, we, we met up with Constance and we went over and just had a grand old time with a bunch of people over at uh, the place where the Cybers were staying. The night got a little carried away and so I never ended up end ending the video. And then after that, I drove to uh, Kentucky and got to spend the evening and the following morning with Tangie at Freedom Homestead. You guys are going to see that video coming up, uh, both on my channel as well as her channel, but I thought I would go ahead and end this video. Uh, number one, if you guys want to support an amazing organization and um, have access, er, early access to any ticket sales, so if you guys want to go to Homesteaders of America next year, you can get early access to the tickets, you can get discounts on all the sponsors, well not all the sponsors, but all the sponsors that offer discounts, you can get discounts, and you can also have access to, a, if you get the premium membership, which is I believe seven $75 right now. There's also a 30, a basic, which is $35. You can get access to, um, to the almost all, if not all of the, um, the presentations that they have at the actual HOA conference, as well as access to many of the different, um, uh, there's a bunch of courses and classes and things and videos that are on on the HOA website. So if you guys want to sign up, I have a link down below as well as in the first pinned comment and you guys can use my code and you guys can get access to all of this amazing stuff as well as being able to support the channel at the same time. So I hope that you guys will consider checking that out if you have not already. And so let's go ahead and end this video with a bit of a mini haul. I didn't get a terrible amount of stuff I didn't get a lot of stuff while I was there. Honestly, I got super carried away um, just talking to people, meeting people, going to the different classes and things like that. I did not take a lot of time this year to actually check out the the merchant booth. So, uh, but the few things that I did check out, I will go ahead and let you know about. So, because I did get some pretty cool stuff. 
the main the main thing that I actually did end up doing going to was the the HOA the Homesteaders of America booth and I got all that stuff like right before we even went to the first event because last year they sold out really quick so I got this hoodie hope that will actually focus maybe it'll focus better on the t-shirt so I got that hoodie there and it's with their their um, it's like a temporary logo thing it's just something it's a special edition so and then I also got the t-shirt to match it because I love it I think it's gorgeous I think it's a super pretty logo so I got those and then I've been wanting this since last year and so I finally got it it's a Homesteaders of America uh, hat I love it and their mug you know me and mugs so I got that I think it's beautiful and then I went to the Haas tools tent and got their radish shirt and so I just haven't oh, actually opened that up it's just it's a radish and it says rad ish so that, that was super cool and then I also went to off grid with Doug and Stacy's booth of course can't go there without seeing Stacy and I got a tea and her tea infuser I've been wanting this I've been seeing it in their videos and I've been wanting it for a while so I finally picked that one up and then I got a I got her fermenting co uh, book which I which she signed on the inside so I'm super excited to actually check this book out I've been wanting to get this book but I knew I was gonna see them at HOA so I waited until I got there so I could actually buy it from them in person so there we go save them some shipping or save myself some shipping and then of course I got Jess's book from Roots and Refuge. It's the first time homesteader and she signed it for me as well. So I got, and I got to meet her. So I really didn't get a lot in comparison to what I end up, what I got last year. <laughs> so I definitely was more tame. It was much more um, about uh, just meeting people. I got to meet a ton of people. I mean, you guys are going to see earlier in this video as well as yesterday's video. If you haven't already seen yesterday's video from day one, make sure you check that one out. And then um, over the next couple of days, I'm just going to be doing some uh, videos that I had recorded before I actually left for HOA. And then uh, sometime early next week, Tangie and I are going to be putting out our videos um, at the same time. It's going to be the same same conversation we'll just be doing different parts of it so uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and as well as yesterday's video where I was bringing you along for the experience of going to HOA if you haven't already make sure that you guys check it out if you can make it to Virginia I drove 16 hours I think it was like at least that's what Google said it was I'm sure with traffic it was much longer but I promise you it's definitely worth it it's worth the drive it's worth the time you get to meet some amazing people and you just get to just have an awesome time so um one thing i do want to make sure that i'm pointing out is that going to hoa is much more about the experience than it is for hoa uh, HOA is fantastic. It's wonderful. It's an awesome organization. You get to hear some fantastic speakers, but I'm not going to drive six, six, 16 hours to see any one person speak. It is simply for the experience. It is getting to meet people. It is getting to hang out with people and just getting to be immersed in this environment of uh, that at least I don't get to experience an, on a normal basis. I'm definitely an outlier in pretty much anywhere that I go, uh, but you kind of just feel, for if not for you know a weekend, you feel kind of normal. Like they're knowing, it gives you a renewed sense of hope that there are other people in the world who are uh, like-minded, at least when it comes to homesteading and with, when it comes to a lot of things, honestly. So. I hope you'll consider checking it out, checking out the organization as well. Remember, there's going to be a link down below that you can sign up for and support the channel at the same time. I hope you'll consider it. 